Good morning. In the movie The Field of Dreams, Ray and Annie Kinsella, these former hippies from Berkeley in the 60s, have moved to Iowa to become farmers. While walking through his field one day, Ray hears a voice whisper, if you build it, he will come. After trying to shake this voice out of his mind, and even after hearing it several times, he then has a vision, a vision of a ball field, of lights, of bleachers, of people coming to watch, and of long dead ball players spending their summers of eternity playing baseball. And it all happens where his cornfield should be. Now every farmer knows you can't survive by plowing up your main cash crop. But Ray's vision is so powerful that he does just that, while his neighbors, all seasoned farmers, just watch in disbelief. And once his field is completed, he smiles as he tells his wife Annie, Hank just created something totally illogical. Ray had a vision of something special, another way of life, but destroying your main source of income for some imagined treasure, well, that is completely illogical by the standards of the world. But that is God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is compared to the one that we have, based, we have built based on power and privilege. It is completely illogical. And maybe that's why it is so hard to see. The kingdom of heaven is like, how would you finish that sentence? What is your idea of the kingdom of God? What do you imagine? Do you choose images from scripture like the lion and the lamb lying down together or as a place where sighing is no more? Or do you choose the images that the culture seems to present that heaven must be a place where all your needs are met all your worries eased, a self-focused, good-for-you kind of place. Jesus never speaks of the kingdom of heaven in that way at all. He describes, describes it for us using the examples of normal, everyday life. And in doing so, he compares our way with God's way. You know, I like Ray Kinsella. I like that he just goes for it because he's heard a voice. But he does so because the voice has stirred something deep within him. And he has the courage to go after this weird vision. He's found a treasure in his field, and it is too compelling to go on with his ordinary life. And for that vision, he is willing to turn his whole world upside down. I hear Jesus rooting for him. Jesus saying, yes, yes, you see the kingdom of God when your whole world is turned upside down by its vision. God's idea of the world may often seem hidden from us, for it's hard to see a realm driven entirely by the power of love. But we followers of Jesus must be looking for it. You know, this virus shows us how something small and unseen upends the world. Well, my friends, we have another reality with the same potential. As we see the power of this virus, we must see that the power of something hidden to us can bring great changes. And so what if we began to look for where God is, even in this situation, bringing about the way of love? I wonder if we began to notice, might not what we see increase? Might we not begin to see it everywhere, growing as a mustard seed from something small to something large? as a mustard seed invading the hillside like kudzu, might we not see it as the leavening for every dough we wish to shape? 
For us to see that other way is to take on the power of love that brings growth. Growth like that of a mustard seed or yeast at work unseen. For us to discover the joy found in the power of God's love is to possess a new, priceless reality. And what if we took that seriously? What if we took seriously the call God offers to us to take courage and walk the power of love? The world will be very different on the other side of this pandemic. We've already made a lot of changes and have to adjust our lives drastically. And we will have to grow into a new reality. So what if we decided in all of those changes and adjustments we will have to make, we as individuals work to allow the power of God's love to shape that new walk for our lives and for our society? What if the power of love became the new mitigating factor of life? I know there is great risk involved and it takes courage to try to upend your world in that way. But I think there's also risk that once we begin, we won't be able to stop. So that's a good risk. But if we begin to see the world through the eyes of the woman who wanted to just make use of all that leavening that she saw. Well, that's Jesus' call to us. Like with the apostles, he calls us to see life in a new way, to get up from our tax tables. to drop our fishing nets, to leave our, our cousin's side like those who left his cousin John's side to follow Jesus. Jesus says you won't find the kingdom of God playing it safe, choosing a career to focus on, saving your pennies for a rainy day. We have always said that life changes quickly and this pandemic has showed us how quickly and how drastically life can change. It's not as secure as we once thought. We've seen fortunes and institutions and careers of this world that we thought would always be there. We've seen how quickly good health can go away. But the kingdom of God, that's the treasure to be snatched up. And so what if we followers of Jesus decided we would do just that? What if we were to snatch up this treasure and help remake the world into the vision and the power of God's love, beginning with our own lives and then spreading and spreading and spreading? Would we discover the life found in a field with great treasure or in possessing God's great pearl as the true life? Schools and healthcare have been on my mind a lot. Ask Kenyon and Anne about the road they have been traveling down. I've been imagining how the church can help for isn't this the time for us to really take a brave step forward? I spoke with the principal of a school recently and she was so overwhelmed, almost as if her heart was breaking. And what she asked of us was very simply, please pray for them. Now, before we dismiss this as, well, that's not doing much, what if we really did that? What if each of us spent time during the day praying for the teachers, the principals, the administrators, trying to find the best way forward to educate our children? 
What if we were praying every day for the nurses, the doctors, those who are cleaning the hospitals, all of those involved in patient care? What if we really prayed for them? Because when we do, and if we do it with great intention, what we will discover is that when we pray for others, we are rooting ourselves in the power of God's love, which brings new possibilities into being. But you know, let's do more than that. I know we are small, but we see how something small can have great power. So let's find other ways to voice the kingdom of God. Seeking the good growth, spreading the great joy of found treasure. Let's build the field that is God's dream. The kingdom of heaven, my friends, is like, well, it's not like the usual way of this world at all. But you know, the really, really, really good news is that the kingdom of God is and nothing, nothing separates us from that. Amen.